Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I want to compare three different Office productivity software suites for you guys, kind of a mouthful there, uh, which are SoftMaker Office 2018, the latest version just released, Microsoft Office 2016, and then LibreOffice. Kind of give you some details about each of those and explain where each kind of fit into their own niche. So. Uh, we're going to kind of focus a little bit more on SoftMaker Office in this video, um, since I guess that's the one I haven't talked about too much on my channel already. So let's just start out with that. If you look at the screen right now, uh, this is SoftMaker Office, and you're going to notice that the layout is incredibly similar to Microsoft Office 2016 and really 2013. It hasn't changed that much since then. And then, uh, to be able to offer it at a lower price than what Microsoft Office is selling for. Now, Microsoft Office is, of course, kind of the premium brand, the one that most companies are going to be using at work, and the one that most schools, at least in the West, uh, tend to use on their machines. So, probably just about everybody is familiar with Microsoft Office at this point. It's a very common household name. But we can pop over to Amazon right here and kind of go through these screenshots. You can see the similarities, aside from a little bit of color scheme differences. It's very, very similar to what you see in SoftMaker Office. So the main difference that they're offering there is that uh, Microsoft Office Home version is $200. So if you go for the Pro version, it's even more than that. And SoftMaker Office, I believe, is $70 or 70 euros for the standard version or $100, 100 euros for the professional version, which also includes uh, built-in dictionaries, uh, which we can kind of see over here. Yeah, okay, so they have a translation button right here where um, English to French, English to Spanish, and to German dictionaries, those all exist in the pro version and those would come out of the box if you were to get the $100 pro version. Um, now that said, I kind of wonder about the usefulness of paying for the extra package there because Google Translate exists now. And we're not going to touch on it too much, but Google Docs also exists where the spreadsheet functionality, the ability to write uh, text documents, and the ability to create presentations also exists out there on the cloud for free. Now, uh, the third software package we're talking about here is LibreOffice, which is what I generally prefer to use. Um, not only is LibreOffice free, but it's also cross-platform onto Linux. Now, one other advantage of SoftMaker is that it also has a Linux version. For some reason, Microsoft hasn't created uh, Microsoft Office for Linux yet, at least. I hope they do in the future, because that would be pretty cool. So anyway, the whole idea of LibreOffice is that you're getting a completely free um, alternative to those paid software packages. Now, it's based on the same code as OpenOffice, but I think OpenOffice has kind of fallen into the background for a long time now. LibreOffice is more consistently updated and um, is kind of overall just better at this point, in my opinion. So in LibreOffice, kind of following the same suit as Microsoft Office, you have the ability to create text documents, spreadsheets, presentations, those are the three big ones, um, but also being able to draw with different symbols um, to manage a database file inside of the program, kind of up there with Microsoft Access, I think that's what they're calling it. So in LibreOffice, it really does come very close to the functionality you have in Microsoft Office without even needing to pay anything. Um, you can see LibreOffice and Press right there. It's just like Microsoft PowerPoint. So Microsoft Office, um, probably most people have used it. It's the most expensive of the three, and you can use it commonly at your workplace because that's what a lot of companies are going to buy. At school, if you're writing reports, it's probably what you're going to be taught if you haven't been taught already. Um, just because it's the common software everybody uses, it's very household name brand. Um, so if you like using the mainstream software, Microsoft Office is fine. It's what everyone else is trying to emulate, so that's all I'm good. But it is a bit expensive. Now, LibreOffice, of course, is the free alternative. Um, it doesn't have exactly the same layout as Microsoft Office 2016. You can notice that it's lacking the ribbon bar um, that Microsoft Office 2016 has. That's not really a big deal. It just means you're dealing with a bunch more icons here, and it's a little bit cluttered. Uh, so let's go over to uh, the web browser here. And you can kind of see the ribbon bar is that thing under the tabbed menu. 
that you have on every Microsoft Office uh, app. And uh, some people are going to prefer that in SoftMaker Office 2018 because they're trying to be pretty much the alternative to Microsoft Office and they want to follow suit as closely as possible. You do have that ribbon bar thing going on right below there. Um, and SoftMaker Office it is at a lower price. Once again, uh, $70 for standard or $100 if you want the dictionaries included inside the app. Now, where do I think that SoftMaker actually fits into all this? Originally, I wasn't going to recommend it for much, but there's two areas where I think it's a valid case to go and buy it. One is that SoftMaker does have a Linux version, um, which is a thing. You can't really buy Microsoft Office to run out of the box on Linux. And the second thing is that if you really are keen on the Microsoft Office layout, but you either want to pay less or you need to use it on Linux, then SoftMaker Office would be a decent way to go. Um, now, one big downside of the app is that you only have four pieces of the program. So you have basically Plan Maker, which is like Excel, Presentations, which is like PowerPoint, Text Maker, which is like Microsoft Word, and then there's Basic Maker, which is for writing uh, programming functions and basic that you can use in those other applications. But for 99% of people out there, you wouldn't touch this, so I hardly count it. Um, but in terms of like the overall functionality of the three apps, uh, Soft Office actually has the least going for it. Because we look over here to LibreOffice, you not only have text document, spreadsheet, presentation, but you also have drawing, database, and then there's functions, which doesn't show up there for, uh, oh, there it is, uh, formula down there. Um, so you have more function in LibreOffice, you have more function in Microsoft Word, or Microsoft Office, sorry, which does make it a tough sell. So if you want basically Microsoft Office on Linux, and it's really important to you for it to look as closely as possible to Microsoft Office, then SoftMaker Office is an alternative that exists out there. But if you're looking for a totally free version, I mean, they do take donations, and of course they are going to need funding to survive at some point, um, but the download itself is free. You can grab LibreOffice, which I think is a really awesome tool. Um, no complaints about it. It's what I usually use. And then, of course, if you're willing to shell out the cash, um, you can grab Microsoft Office. So. One thing I'll say about Microsoft Office though is that next year, um, they say mid-2018, Microsoft Office 2019 is going to be coming out. So you might want to hold off if you're in the market for one of these apps uh, for a little while there. But uh, hopefully that gives you a good idea of these three Office productivity suites. I've been Chris, thanks for watching, and I will see you guys in my future video content.